There have been some big changes here at the Field Journal over the last couple of years. As you've probably noticed, I'm not in Florida. I'm in the San Juan Mountains in Colorado. My boyhood haunts and now my home. It's so amazing to be surrounded by almost two million acres of national forest. I retired from the Education Channel in Florida to devote more time to the Wild Orchid Man films and projects that reach beyond just Florida. I'm frequently asked, what's the best camera for wildlife filmmaking? There are a lot of good cameras out there, but today I want to talk about a class of cameras called bridge cameras. Many of the films I make rely on detailed stills, like landscapes and flowers, sometimes capturing a moment in time is more powerful than motion through time. Searching for the capabilities to do both stills and 4K video led me to look at bridge cameras. Yes, I know most competent still cameras shoot 4K video, but they require an assortment of lenses. My photography career started back with a Nikon F. Yes, I'm that old. The challenge back then, as it is today, is having the right lens on the camera at the right time. For wildlife, you need a long lens. While most photographers lust after these behemoth monsters, it takes a loan from the World Bank to purchase one. As far as run and gun shooting, good luck with getting the shot. Enter the bridge camera. These cameras are somewhere between a point-and-shoot and a digital SLR. Bridge cameras range from a few hundred dollars to a couple of thousand. They have a fixed lens, which usually has an impressive zoom range. All the major manufacturers have at least one model. But today I'll talk about the one that kind of blew me away. That's a Sony RX-10 Mark III and Mark IV. I still use my Sony AX100 for recording more than 29 minutes and when I need a fully articulating screen. The Sony RX-10 Mark IV is almost in a category of its own. When its predecessor, the Mark III, came out with a 24 to 600 zoom, I had to get one. I wasn't disappointed. Then the Mark IV came out with faster autofocus and several other nice updates. I bought it. Both cameras 
of a one inch chip and shoot 20 megapixel stills and 4K video. The Mark III is around $1,300 and the Mark IV is about $300 more. They have assignable buttons or dust and moisture resistant and they shoot macros at both ends of the zoom. The focus range is from 2 inches wide to 12 inches telephoto. No camera is really perfect, but this one comes pretty close. But I do have a wish list in case they ever make a Mark V. A fully articulating LCD would be nice. Better low light capabilities. The image can get noisy at a higher ISO. A second card slot, but with higher capacity cards, it's really not a necessity for me. Two big things on my wish list would be 4K at 60p and the ability to do time lapse. There are many reviews and tutorials on these cameras, and there's several excellent books, but I'd like to talk about audio and hats. This hat has served me for years. It's been through all kinds of weather, from the Andes to the Himalayas, from steamy swamps and jungles frozen tundra, but it's time for it to retire. There is a practical reason for my new hat. I can use the viewfinder on the RX-10 even if it has an external mic. The Smart 3 has a Sony K2M XLR adapter, which allows it to take two XLR mics. It works on the Mark IV as well. This Mark IV has a Rode Video Mic Plus. It is a very competent mic except for one design flaw. The mic input is in the back. If you use the viewfinder, it hits you in the forehead. A partial solution is a custom, flat, right-angle cable. No matter what camera you use, or how much it costs, learn it, practice with it, experiment. The more you use your camera, the better your results will be.